Did Kevin Lee make a massive mistake against Charles Oliveira? Apart from missing weight, the Motown phenom might have also missed a golden opportunity to finish Oliveira after he unknowingly hurt him. However, all the credit must go to Charles, who masterfully recovered before he could annihilate Kevin Lee. We're gonna look at the general tendencies of this fight with the help of a few key sequences. That way, we'll be able to understand how Oliveira's game can cause problems to the best fighters in the world, even through adversity. In the first round, Oliveira immediately surprised Kevin Lee with well-executed jumping kicks. Speaking of kicks, Charles did an excellent job of controlling the distance using them. That made a huge difference in the range battle. What also made a difference in the distance battle was the way Oliveira used his tall posture to strike and slip punches. Oliveira wasn't getting hit too clean too often, and almost not a single jab touched him. His tall posture allowed him to roll punches more easily, but what allowed that stance is the fact that he's not worried about being taken down. He doesn't care about rolling a punch in a way where he ends up in the clinch or in a bad wrestling position, and that's all because of his crafty jiu-jitsu and his scrambling abilities. As expected, Kevin Lee showed superior wrestling to win scrambles and get top position, but every time he did so, at least one limb, an arm, a leg, the neck, was controlled by Oliveira. That's how Charles controlled Lee's top game maneuvers because Kevin always had at least one limb to worry about and so he was never safe or in total control on the ground. Now let's look at this very important sequence. Oliveira's at the bottom and he's trying to improve his guard and that's where he shows a nice trick. Look at his left leg and observe how he uses both of his hands to take Lee's right hand. So there are three hands together now and that's where the magic comes in. Oliveira uses that pack of fingers to grab his own foot. He knows Lee has to move his hand outside of his crotch because it has nothing to do there. At least, not at that particular moment. Oliveira uses that knowledge to slide his foot in the same space that Lee used to move his hand outside. It might not seem like much, but that's just a brilliant way to improve his guard. And not only that, because he gained leverage on Lee's arm using two hands, he now has control over that arm with wrist control and can now use his other hand to control Lee's head. And from that position, it's fairly easy to slide the left leg up for the triangle. Oliveira explodes for it, it's not there, but he gains even more leverage on Lee's hand. It's now pretty much behind his back, and while Lee is trying to posture up, Chal goes for the triangle again and again, showing incredible dexterity. Third time, he gets it, but Kevin reacts well by sliding his other arm out of the choke. Oliveira can't grip, loses the sub attempt, but of course, uses the momentum to scramble. That kind of sequence happened over and over again and Lee couldn't keep safe control on top of Oliveira, at least not if he was trying to attack Charles. The multiple leg locks, triangles, arm bars and calf slicers kept Lee on the edge. Second round. Oliveira starts a blitz and Lee reacts heavily this time. He keeps backing up, circling to Oliveira's left. He's on the back foot. What really impressed me was the distance control of Oliveira. With the help of his tall, fighting stance, he slipped Kevin's jab like it was nothing, and his multiple kicks kept Lee out of the pocket more often than not. Plus, Charles' footwork had a massive impact on how Lee was forced to fight. Because of all those reasons, Lee couldn't enter the pocket like he wanted to, and as a result, his timing was predictable. Not only that, Lee's punches are quite slow, especially after wrestling exchanges. Oliveira could evade Lee's offense and pick his shots. He also used Lee's particular stance to his advantage. Indeed, Kevin kind of leans forward when he fights, and a few ascending strikes right up the middle hit him on the button. Then he shoots for a takedown, and immediately Oliveira is back at it again with a new setup for a different submission. There's way too many things happening for Lee. Another transition to the omoplata, another transition to the triangle, Again, scrambles, word position, and Lee goes for another takedown. Ladies and mostly gentlemen, we have arrived to the decisive moment. I cannot wait to read your takes on this, but I believe that Kevin Lee hurt Oliveira badly with this takedown. Oliveira got his head slammed on the mat so hard, I honestly thought he was out. Regardless of if he was or not, that hurt him a lot, and Kevin had no idea. Look at the way Oliveira goes relaxed for a short period of time. All of a sudden, way less proactive with his guard, 
but at that point, Kevin was so worried about Oliveira's bottom game that he was delighted to keep half guard and top control, especially because half guard is a relatively stable position. He knew that the best way to control Charles was to be heavy on top and to not give him any opportunities or any arm to grab. Oliveira, on the other hand, was delighted to have some time to recover and held on to half guard for dear life, knowing that he was relatively safe. A veteran of the UFC showing all of his experience. Third round. In less than a minute, the fight's gonna be over. Oliveira again starts wild, and that's what happens with some jiu jitsu masters that have good athletic ability. They can throw wild strikes without having to worry too much about ending up in a bad spot. Ryan Hall is a great example of that. At the start of the round, Kevin looked to change the game plan, and instead of throwing single strikes, he was going for combos around Oliveira's guard, using good footwork and angles. It looked like Kevin Lee was having a lot of success, but that being said, there's a reason why Fihar Sahabi didn't advise Kevin to do this. The Motown Phenom can gas out really quick if he pushes the pace, especially at light overweight. And that's the beginning of the end for him. Oliveira kicks and is so ready for Kevin's single leg. He grabs the neck, adjusts his grip and drags Kevin's head to the floor mercilessly. The grip is so tight and the drag is so vicious. Lee is completely surprised. The failed single leg allows Oliveira to easily wrap his legs around Lee's knee to finish the submission in half guard. I didn't even know what to eat while I was down there. In the end, Kevin Lee had too many things to worry about, too many types of submission to prevent. You know, I was eating like nuts. But a question remains, what could Lee have done to win this fight? One, control Oliveira on the ground. But that's dangerous if he wants to be offensive with his ground and pound or his wrestling. Two, catch him off guard with jabs and straight punches. But that showed to be ineffective against Charles for the majority of the fight. Three, chain wrestling because he won almost every wrestling exchange, but then again, not only is he in danger of tiring out, he's also at risk of getting sneakily submitted. And four, hooks and combinations around the guard, but same problem, energy conservation. Plus, Lee can be dragged down or taken down more easily with this strategy. As you can see, pretty much all of his options were risky and dangerous, and I think that really shows Oliveira's improvements in his game. Lee can out-wrestle anybody at 158 pounds, but the energy cost might be too much. Way too heavy. It was a great fight, both fighters really gave everything to win, even after the fight was over. Because Oliveira's stand-up has improved, Dobronx has many more options now. It's kinda like his opponent can't put him anywhere uncomfortable. On his back? No problem. Stand up? No problem. Wrestling? Probably ends up on his back. Still no problem. Oliveira is a masterfully lethal veteran, and what a great test he poses for any top lightweight in the UFC. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. See ya.